Don't you two ever make it to Charles at the same time? <laughs> Little woman's probably worked up one hell of an appetite. Out boogieing all night? <laughs> boogieing? Yeah, you know. Dancing? Well, didn't they set up a disco in the Casablanca bar? Oh, yeah, I forgot. I hit the sack early last night with Christopher Isherwood. Mouse, you have a Wait, wait a minute. Run that by me again. It's a book. Christopher and his kind. Mouse, I really think... What's it about? He wrote Cabaret. Oh, about crowds. Oh, you bet. We have blueberry pancakes today, Mouse. Isn't Liza Minnelli just darling? Hmm? Okay, so, give me the dirt. Well, come on. Did he ravish you on the poop deck? Brutalize you in the bilge? Suck your toes? Buy you a cup of coffee? Mouse, you ruined breakfast for me. Okay, so if I'm so boring, why didn't you ask Burke to join us? What, so you can tell Melvin Arnold snappy stories about the little woman? Hey, look, the young marriage routine was your idea, remember? Just lower your voice. Lower your own goddamn voice. What the hell do you think I am, anyway? Rent a hubby? know already? Um, maybe that too. I... You have a special request this time. Uh, um, I got some uh, purple haze now and uh, some dynamite black beauties. This is different. You remember that friend of yours who settles scores? Mm. It's not what you think. It's nothing heavy. It's just... I need... It's kind of special. I mean, it's a special situation. It'll cost you. I know, I know. Um, when can we talk? Tonight, 8 o'clock. Where? <clears throat> At the doggy diner. Uh, uh, no snow, huh? Um, no, no, Bruno, not tonight. No, thanks. Mm, lovely, though. I'll get straight to the point, Mrs. Halcyon. Peter Keating suggested that I approach you concerning your interest in Pinus. <clears throat> How much do you know about Pinus? Oh, well, <laughs> most of it's hearsay. Word of mouth is our strongest safeguard. Discrimination seems to be a nasty word these days, doesn't it? We think of it as quality control. <laughs> and of course, the less publicity we receive, the more we can fulfill the needs of our members. This is our brochure. I'm sure you'd like to mull it over alone. Aside from the social criteria, the only other requirement for membership is to have reached one's 60th birthday. Your timing is perfect. I know. Did Vita... Our philosophy is this. That women of our maturity and our station in life are entitled to whatever lifestyle we can afford. We have, after all, played by the rules for 40 years. Raising children, tolerating husbands, joining the right club, supporting the correct charities. We have paid our dues. Pinus is not, of course, the only solution. It's simply the most fulfilling one. And if we have the money for it, why on earth should we squander it on facelifts and body tucks and in youth injections? Fortunately, women like us can afford the best. 
And what's wrong with that? What's wrong with demanding our piece of the pleasure pie? <laughs> the switchboard. Charlene. Yeah. Uh, well, keep it short, and you can quit this grandma crap. Well, what's the problem? I'm going home. I'm going back to... Yeah, I heard you the first time. Ashamed of me, are you? No, I could never be ashamed of you. So why are you quitting? The first decent job you ever had in your life. I don't know. It's spring and I keep thinking about San Francisco. There are these purple trees on Barbary Lane. So why'd you leave? Looking for family, I guess. I thought you said you'd found it. Part of it. A big part. And I have to put it together. That's why I'm taking you back to meet my father. Me? Forget it. I, I ain't even seen him in 40 fucking years. Her. What? You ain't seen her in 40 fucking years. Don't make no never mind. Sure it does. She's your daughter now. She ain't nothing now. That's good. You're getting the pronoun right. Keep working on it. Where do you keep your suitcases? Why'd you leave California? I don't know. I guess, um, my father and all, he needed help with the publishing business. Is that what you did in San Francisco? No. I was just, uh, bumming around. For three years? <laughs> Are you asking me how rich I am? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm... <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm flustered, I guess. Just so damn typical. You meet someone nice. Someone you get along with fabulously. So, of course, they live 3,000 miles away in Nantucket. It's a jib, that's all. Was last night a jib? No. You know that. We have a week. Let's make the most of it. Huh? Okay. Oh, how precious. <laughs> make him go. He's only trying to sell. Please. <coughs> <coughs> Forgive me. No, it, it's okay. I'm really he just, uh, sorry. Startled you or something. It wasn't him. It was the rose. So, who is she, dear? Who? <laughs> the creature who's driven my carefree boy to utter distraction. There is one, isn't there? Hmm? 
I think you've got the wrong carefree boy. <laughs> Besides, I don't feel like playing games. Of course, if you know any creatures, I could always use another notch on my gun. Brian, Brian. That isn't you, dear. Oh, will you lay off with I that? I worry about you. I know I'm a nosy old biddy. But what the hell? Right now, I've got nothing better to do. May I give you some advice? The next time you meet a girl, someone that you really like, pretend that you're a war hero. And that all your basic plumbing got shot off in the war. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm perfectly serious. Don't tell a soul. Especially her, for heaven's sakes. But, um, pretend to yourself that the only way you can communicate is through your eyes and your heart. Hmm? Well, what if she wants, um, you know, <laughs> wants me to, uh... <laughs> you can't. You lost your wee-wee, remember? <laughs> All you can do is smile bravely and invite her for dinner. Or maybe a nice walk in the park. And how long do I have to keep pretending? Till she asks you. What? <laughs> If you've been wounded in the war, of course. Then what do I tell her? The truth. That everything's intact. It'll be a lovely surprise for her. And you'll have a nice surprise as well. What? Hmm. <sighs> you'll know the poor dear. You might even like her by then. Now, let me get this straight, man. You don't want her grease, but you want me to... Keep your voice down. They're all space cadets, man. They ain't listening. Okay. Right, I didn't mean that. I'm, I'm just a little jumpy. I've never done this before. So, tell me what you want. I want you to see to it that she doesn't have the baby. The babies. You want me to kick her in the gut? I don't want you to hurt her. You want me to kick her in the gut without hurting her? She's my wife, right? I don't want any permanent harm done. And if you can't promise me that, we might as well call the whole thing off. How the hell do you expect me to guarantee? I mean, there could be a, what you call it? A, complications. Well, try to avoid them. I mean, it can't be that difficult to arrange. How much? What's it worth? Five thousand. Considering the hassles. I'll give you seven, but I want it done right. You know I'll subcontract it. I don't care. I want cash in advance. How soon? As soon as I find somebody. I'll make it soon. And Bruno. Hmm. Wipe your mouth.
Hello. Just uh, checking up on you. Thanks. If you need anything sent over, let me know, will you? Beecham, why are you being so goddamn nice? I guess I uh, miss you. I want those babies so much. I'm not trying to hurt you. I know, darling. We'll just give it some time. I just need to be by myself for a while. I understand. There's a chicken pot pie in the freezer. Guess what? What? I'm jealous. I'm one jealous little queen. I'm jealous of Burke because he's taken away my playmate. I'm jealous of you because you found a lover. I'm sorry, Mouse. I should have made up with you earlier. I'm... I'm a little edgy, I guess. About what? Burke. He's not. He's perfect. <laughs> he's strong, and he's sensitive, and he's considerate, and we're sexually, you know, whatever. And he's, he's protective, but he treats me like an equal, and he doesn't crack his knuckles, and he's perfect. But not perfect. On the beach today, someone tried to sell us a rose. Burke took one look at the rose, turned white, and threw up. I mean, it isn't normal, is it? You're asking me. I, I tried to get him to talk about it, but it, he kept changing the subject. It's like he didn't have the least idea why he reacted that way. At least you found him. You'll find somebody, Mouse. I know it. In Acapulco, maybe. Mm. Maybe this time, huh? Oh, I love you, Michael Mouse, for that. What? Changing everything into a song lyric. Hmm. Yeah. Isn't Liza Minnelli just darling? <laughs> Yeah. I'm Bruno. So? I want to talk to you. Nope. The band's got a sound check in two minutes.
Any gay places? You want a red light? Uh, no, not red light. Um, men? Men? See, si, men. Oh, I'm a sex. I'm a sex. Look, if you just give me your phone number, that's all. Hey, tell me your name then. Just your first name if you want. I'm a nice guy, I swear. 
Don't you think this is a little weird? You haven't forgiven me, have you? For what? The end up dance contest? I don't blame you. It was a tacky scene. Oh. I was the tacky one. I was with some pissy queens from Seacliff, and I just couldn't handle it. Why would you even want friends like that? I don't. Not anymore. won the contest, you know. You should have. Classes. My stomach feels titchy. You're just nervous. It's okay. It's okay to experience a... Well, it ain't okay with me, girl. Please, Mother Mucka, don't you want to meet Anna? Anna! Anna! I called him Andy for 16 years. What are you staring at? I know, but a lot has changed. Since... <laughs> So, what's it look like? <laughs> I told you that already. Well, tell me another goddamn time. Well, she's very... very majestic. Smells like a fucking racehorse. See for yourself, then. Taxi! I'm so glad. Isn't it marvelous? I love watching them work. It's so graceful and precise and predictable. Unlike life. Unlike life. Whoa. <laughs> you look fine. I'm the one who ought to be worrying. You're eating for two, honey. Three. You get dessert. You're not married, are you? I'm separated. Why did you think? You just look, um, independent. 
By the way, <laughs> my name's Dee Dee. Dorothea, with an apostrophe. An apostrophe. Mm -hmm. I used to be a model in a previous life. Mm. Did you tell him we're coming? I didn't say when. I didn't want to put her in a negative space before What the we hell are you talking about? I didn't want to make her feel uncomfortable. <gasps> didn't mind making me feel uncomfortable. Behave yourself, will you? Come on. It's gonna be just fine. Mona, darling, I, I don't look like an old witch, do I? Oh, Mother Mucka, you're beautiful. Don't worry, please. She's going to love you. Well, we ain't brought her nothing. We're all she needs. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, <clears throat> ring the doorbell, girl. Well, do I get a hug or don't I? Isn't there somebody you'd like me to meet? Oh, God, don't. I'm sorry. That girl's got the manners of a mule. Glad you came. Okay, well, can't stay long, huh? I know. Well, we can have a little sherry and a nice chat. I never thought I'd meet anyone like you on this trip. Come on. Your looks? <laughs> I mean it. Yes. Most of the guys I meet in San Francisco, all they want to do is talk about their dumb Porsches, their tape decks, but... You know, it's what you say, Burke. It's... I don't know, it's... how you look at me. <laughs> how you react to things. I, I know you look at me as an equal. I'll always be grateful for that. Ever think about moving to San Francisco? Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. That's okay. No, it's 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 not. I, let's just change the subject. No, um, we should talk. Oh God. Michael always had this instinct that. Listen to me, Marianne. <laughs> I'm listening. I, I lived in San Francisco for three years. Mm -hmm. Three whole years of my life, and did you know I'm so out of it? You know where my goddamn boyish naivete comes from? I, I live in San Francisco, too, and a lot of my friends... Listen, will you? I can't remember a single goddamn thing about it. Not a single 
goddamn thing. Do you mean you... You mean you have amnesia? It ain't natural. I thought we'd gotten past that. Speak for yourself. I raised that child. That's my own flesh and blood. You raised her in a goddamn whorehouse. What'd you expect? John Wayne? I'm gonna slap you. I thought I had some butter cookies, but I think one of the children might have polished them off. You got children? She means the tenants. I call them children. <laughs> it's a little silly, I suppose. But they don't seem to mind. Or if they do, they don't tell me. So. You've had lots of adventures, I suppose. Winnemucca's a trip. <laughs> I can imagine. I hope Mona wasn't in the way. She's a lot like both of us, don't you think? She has your looks, though. Ain't no wonder. What? You call that a hat. Oh. Well, I don't see what's... Damnation, girl, ain't you got no hair? Of course I... I... have. Now, why the hell you got it all crammed up under that bonnet like it was bald as an egg? Look, girl. You and me gotta talk. I assumed that was the purpose of this visit. So where's your goddamn bedroom? Hmm? <clears throat> this way. And the thing about the roses? That's part of it. I also freak out on walkways with railings along the side. Like, like you did yesterday? That's part of it, too. Mm-hmm. Do you at least remember why you went to San Francisco? I was a reporter. I was assigned there by the Associated Press. And you remember nothing about it? Oh, the first part's gruesomely clear. The boredom, the deadlines. After five weeks, I quit. Oh, that's where the three-year blackout started. What about your parents? Didn't you write to them? Just the usual, I'm fine, don't worry about me stuff. I lived on Knock Hill for a while, I know that. I attended services at Grace Cathedral. I did temporary clerical work. So at, at least you remember that much. Oh, that's only what I told them. I don't remember. Well, <laughs> if you don't remember, then how'd you get back to Nantucket? They found me. Who did? Some cops in Golden Gate Park. Seems I passed out. It took them three days to even figure out who I was. I was lucky. The Nantucket stuff came back almost immediately, along with my name. I just don't know what I was doing in San Francisco. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Can I ask you one thing? Please. Who's gonna love you like this? Like what? When you ain't neither one thing or t'other. Oh. This your fella? Yes. 
she is. Oh. <laughs> right, Purdy, huh? He went to, to the blue moon once. When he was a boy. Nah, come on. <laughs> he did. He had Margaret. He told me. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she surveyed you with the blue. Huh? I know. <laughs> I, I remember. in an aerial photograph. I told you things would work out. Yeah, I guess you did. <laughs> He's awfully nice. I know. It scares the hell out of me. Why? Oh, don't make me analyze it. When I analyze things, they stop happening. You know what I mean, don't you? God, yes. Seems like every time I start up with somebody new, I can see the beginning and the end all at once. I know how to die. This time, though, I don't want to know the end. Maybe there won't be one. Everything ends, baby cakes. Oh, you and I haven't ended. Yeah, we don't need each other. It's those other turkeys we need. These one and onlys. <sighs> At least we think we do. Our poor little psyches have been marred forever by Rock Hudson and Doris Day. Guess what? I um, did some dickering with the Mater D. Uh, I'm at your table now. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Arnold and Melba will just adore you. Oh, hell. God, what are we going to tell them? <laughs> well, I think we should say that our marriage simply isn't working, so we're planning an amicable divorce, after which Burke and I will have a simple Episcopal wedding at Grace Cathedral. <laughs> Very funny. Oh, it's got a point, you know. I could be gay. I mean, if I can't remember. You are not gay. That's an order. I don't know. Look at that body, girl. Straight dudes don't have washboard stomachs. This one does. Come on, you sickos. <laughs> I'm so hungry I could eat a steward. Thank you. Here they come. Hi, young Mary. Oh, no. Oh, who's your friend? Oh, this is my friend. Oh, oh, oh. Seasick. He didn't strike me as that kind of fella. Great legs, though. Huh? Great to have sea legs. Oh, right on. Hmm. Wouldn't a psychiatrist do something? If they could cure your amnesia, wouldn't that take care of your fear of roses and walkways with railings? I've seen one already. He uh, hypnotized me and uh, interrogated me and did everything but stick pins in a voodoo doll and nothing. What if you... I mean, I was wondering... Maybe, wouldn't it sort of jog your memory if you sort of, you know, came back to San Francisco? It would almost be worth it to be with you. It, ju it, ju it just seems that if you were around your old places, if you were exposed to them, then, then maybe your memory might come back and you could sort of, you know, exercise your phobias. <laughs> Who the hell am I kidding? Not me. 
I hate goodbyes. I always lose it. Me too. Nothing's ever been as nice as this. I agree. Then why don't we... Oh, God. <laughs> what do I look like I'm begging? Do I look like I'm saying no? Dummy. You will? <laughs> well, well, what about your parents? I mean, won't they be a little, you know, free? I mean, about, about San Francisco, I mean. <laughs> no more than I am. I think there's a vacancy in my building. <laughs> no, it's, it, it's on Russian Hill in Barbary Lane. It has the, has the most darling little walkway, like something out of a fairy tale. And the landlady is so neat. And Michael lives just downstairs. It's like we've made this, I don't know, family for ourselves. Hold out your hand. A key? It was in my pocket when they found me in the park. It's all that's left of me. Whoever I am, Marianne, I love you.